Three British explorers studying Arctic sea ice have reported that they found no multi-year ice after making 16,000 observations and measurements. Penn Haddo and Daniel and photographer Martin Hartley over 73 days measured the thickness of floating sea ice to provide data to scientists studying the impact of global warming in the region. We've made 16,000 observations and measurements. 1,500 of those have been um, manually drilled through the sea ice and, uh, and physically measured um, with a tape measure. Last year, a team of NASA researchers estimated the Arctic Ocean seasonal ice, that's ice that's only one year old, for 2005 and 2006 as an average of six feet. The British group discovered the average thickness of sea ice was five feet. In the same NASA study, the average 2005-2006 thickness of ice two years or older was nine feet. In the test sites drilled by the three British explorers, they found no older ice at all. General consensus is that we had it that expected um, us to find some older, thicker ice along this route, um, what is technically known as multi-year ice, but actually we found none, and uh, so there is a bit of a mystery. Until recently, the majority of Arctic sea ice survived at least one summer and often several, but things have changed dramatically according to a team of University of Colorado scientists led by Charles Fowler. In this map produced by Fowler's team, the red dots represent multi-year older ice, while the blue areas indicate ice in its first year. Progressing from 1979 to 2008, it shows a gradual decrease in older, thicker ice. Thin seasonal ice, ice that melts and refreezes every year, makes up about 70% of the Arctic sea ice in wintertime, up from 40 to 50% in the 1980s and 1990s. Thicker ice, which survives two or more years, now comprises just 10% of wintertime ice cover, down from 30 to 40%. In the winter of 2009, seasonal ice made a comeback, with colder temperatures in April, but older ice continued to recede. In this NASA chart, yellow represents first-year ice, orange second year, and red older ice. The decrease in older ice from 2000 to 2009 is dramatic. So does the discovery of lack of multi-year ice by the British explorers mean that Arctic sea ice is about to disappear? Dr. Vicki Pope, who heads the British Meteorological Office, sounds a cautionary note. She wrote in the Guardian newspaper, the record-breaking losses in the past couple of years could easily be due to natural fluctuations in the weather, with summer sea ice increasing again over the next few years. But she added, recent test results do show that there's a detectable human impact in the long-term decline in sea ice over the past 30 years, and all the evidence points to a complete loss of summer sea ice much later this century. Dr. Pope concluded, when climate scientists are asked to explain to people what we do for a living, we're increasingly asked whether we believe in climate change. Quite simply, it's not a matter of belief. Our concerns about climate change arise from the scientific evidence that humanity's activities are leading to changes in our climate. The scientific evidence is overwhelming. Donate today and receive a new documentary film available to members of the Real News Network. The History of the National Security State with legendary author Gore Vidal. Bonus features of the DVD include an in-depth response to Vidal from ex-CIA analyst Ray McGovern, who served under seven U.S. presidents, an exclusive interview with Colin Powell's former chief of staff Larry Wilkerson, and an insightful interview with oil policy analyst Antonia Juhas. <laughs> News magazine of the screen. Living glimpses of history in the making. Hollywood and Washington, there's a symbiotic relationship. They both deal with illusions. Reality doesn't often uh, play much of a part. I think I saw through the myth of the uh, Cold War almost from the beginning. I was a Washington political kid from a political family. Roosevelt first had radio because he had a, this great speaking voice and everyone liked to hear. Truman proceeded to break every arrangement that Roosevelt had set up for a peaceful coexistence. And Truman thought that it would be a good idea. Why not just stay armed all the time? 
And then he devised the national security state. You've got to go up and swear allegiance to the United States or else you're a commie. I mean, we, were, we had imported fascism. We get Dwight Eisenhower, who said that we have this great military industrial complex. It is a dangerous thing. And he said, this is going to change everything. And the way our country's governed, it's going to change us politically. Along comes Jack Kennedy, who wanted to make his mark, believed in the Cold War. But he said, in this kind of politics, it is the appearance of things that matters. I think everybody should take a sober look at the world about us. The national security state still exists, only it isn't communism anymore, it's terrorism. This is the most serious thing that has happened in the history of the United States. Knowledge is power. We need an honest news system. We need the real news. This is the sort of thing we can build right now without anyone else's permission from the government or from the business community. It's the powers in our hands. If we're not going to sleepwalk into more wars, we think we need to start with a television news network that won't bow to pressure and has the courage to seek facts. And that means independent economics. And that's why we need you. Make a tax-deductible donation now of at least $10 a month or a one-time give of at least $75. As a thank you for your support, we will send you the new documentary film, The History of the National Security State.